With this keying demonstration, you could either follow along in the Jepson manual if you have it, you could follow along um, on the eFlora, or you could just um, sit back and enjoy the show. And so it's really intimidating to go through and see, you know, all of those lines of text. And um, there's really a lot of information to get through um, and it can be challenging. So what I'm trying to do here is just kind of to break it down into the fundamental parts, which are couplets. So we'll be going from the very beginning with the key to California plant family, families, key to groups um, and going one by one through each of these couplets together. So specimens available for examination without flowers, these either not present on the specimen or not produced at all, or specimens available for examination with flowers, often also producing seeds within fruits, angiosperms. So in this case, we do have a flowering specimen, which is indeed an angiosperm. Specimens with only cleistogamous flowers, fruits developing without flowers opening, or specimens with open flowers. So cleistogamous flowers are unusual. Um, they may appear to look just like flower buds. And the idea there is if you think back to pollination, an open flower is a flower that is inviting animals to come in and carry pollen away. And so a cleistogamous flower is basically a selfing flower. So it's self-fertilizing, the petals may never open and they may look just like buds. So it's an unusual characteristic that is designed to be eliminated early on in the key. Um, in this case, we do have nice open flowers. Specimens with unisexual flowers of only one kind, staminate or pistillate, but not both. Plants dioecious or monoecious, or specimens with bisexual flowers or with both staminate and pistillate flowers on same or different individuals, plants bisexual, dioecious or monoecious, occasionally with mixture of bisexual and unisexual flowers. So this is a little bit of review. We remember diece and monoece, um, imperfect flowers or unisexual flowers, meaning just staminate or just carpellate. In this case, we have both stamens and pistils. So we do have bisexual flowers with both parts. Pistils two or more per flower, um, carpels more than one free to the base, or pistil one per flower, carpel one or carpels more than one fused at least proximally. So in this case, we can see, looks like we have one pistil. Um, so looking here, we have the ovary, the style, and the stigmas here. So that is, looks like one, it may be more than one carpal, but it is one pistil. Perianth zero or in a single whorl, appearing to be either sepals or petals, but not both, sometimes reduced to scale-like or bristle-like structures, or perianth in two or more whorls, generally both sepals and petals, or perianth parts spiraled two or more times around floral axis. So in this case, we have four distinct whorls, and this is a little bit of an interesting example because it, it kind of defies our expectation for what petals and what sepals look like. And so the important thing to remember about floral morphology and the distribution of whorls is that there are four whorls and their position relative to each other is what defines them as parts. So in this case, what are these structures here? These are actually the sepals because this is the outermost whorl. And then these petals are the next whorl. And then we have the stamens and then pistil to the inside. But we do have four whorls and the perianth is in two whorls. Perianth parts two or three per whorl or perianth parts generally four or five per whorl. Rarely some other number of whorls differing in number of parts or in a spiral with the number of parts indefinite. So this again gets to that really critical break within angiosperms that separates a large group of um, monocots from eudicots. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five sepals, five petals, and five stamens. 
petals fused into a ring or a tube, the corolla generally falling as a unit, corolla of free petals fused to a hypanthium should be keyed under 19 prime, petals free, at least at base, attached and generally falling singly, sometimes individually joined to a hypanthium. And a few families more or less join and falling in groups, but not forming a ring or a tube or petal. So in this case, are the corollas free or are they fused? They look fused to me. That's right. So, but what's happening here is we also have a fusion of the stamens and the petals. So we have a hypanthium. So we will go key under 19 prime. So from there, we have either leaves compound or deeply divided so as to appear compound or leaves simple, sometimes much reduced. In this case, we have a simple leaf. Ovary inferior or partly so, or ovary superior. So this is a point where it's really helpful to dissect the flower a little bit or pull some of the corolla away so you can kind of see in cross section. In this case, we have an inferior ovary. So that will take us to group 21. And so this is a good point when you make a big transition within the key to read the description and double check. Leave simple, perianth in two or more whorls or spirals, petals four or more free, Pistol one ovary inferior. So stamens more than two times as many as petals or more than 15 or stamens two times as many as petals or fewer. So in this case, it looks like we have same number of stamens and petals, five of each. And then stamens opposite and equal in number to petals or stamens alternate petals or different in number. And so in this case, again, remember that these are the sepals and these are the petals. So looking at the arrangement of these petals and the stamens is they are alternate. Style one, sometimes distally branched or styles more than one. So this is kind of a tricky couplet. And in this case, we do have a single style that is branched. But I should say that in the key, if you were to misinterpret this structure, you would be able to key to the correct family no matter which choice you took. So it's important to remember when thinking about the key is it, it's not necessarily an ideal description of the plant. It's designed to be as user-friendly and as simple to use as possible. So sometimes, the key will allow for misinterpretations of organs or structures. So that's just something to bear in mind as you're going through the key. It's better to read the description to interpret forms than to remember how it keyed because sometimes the keys do allow for mistakes. Plant a tendril bearing vine, flowers unisexual, plants monoecious, corolla sometimes so deeply divided that petals appear to be free, cucurbitaceae, or plant not tendril bearing, flowers generally bisexual. So in this case, we don't seem to have any tendrils and we do have bisexual flowers. Ovules more than one per chamber or ovule one per chamber or perennial herb. So in this case, uh, we don't know how many ovules there are, but we can see that there are lots of them. And so it's a little bit tricky to see how many chambers there are. This is a really immature ovary. When it's a fully developed fruit, that's probably an easier guess. But in the meantime, you can look at the number of style branches and that's often a really good indication of how many chambers or carp carpels you may have in the ovary. So next we have an herb to subshrub is onagraceae or a shrub. So in this case, we definitely have a woody plant 
Um, so it looks like a small tree or a shrub, but definitely not an herb. Stamens five, sometimes four, free. Leaves ovate or obovate to round, generally palmately three to five lobed, generally toothed, glands stalked or none, it's grossulariaceae, or stamens 10 fused in ring with staminodes. And staminodes, maybe we didn't discuss, but they are non-sterile stamens, so resembling stamens, but not bearing pollen, non-fertile, excuse me, and leaves linear, needle-like entire opposite glands embedded in leaves, which would bring us to Myrtaceae. So we do have these really nice three or five lobed um, toothed leaves. And we did see in some of those earlier images, some really nice um, stalked glands. So this brings us to the genus Ribes. So it's always good to take a moment Carefully read the description, make sure that it accords with your specimen. And if it does, then you can move on to the key. And so within the key to ribes, we have nodal spines none or nodal spines present, sometimes none on some shoots. And so when I was giving the vegetative morphology lecture, I was talking about nodes in terms of places where leaves were on along the axis or on the stem of the plant. So in this case, the leaves may have fallen, but these are still nodes because you can see the leaf scars along the branch here. So in this case, the nodes remain even when the leaves are gone, and that is the anticipated position of the spines. So in this case, we can see a lot of places where leaves had been and have a, a twig with new leaves and there are no spines. So in that case, the nodes are um, not always bearing leaves. Hypanthium disc or saucer shaped, barely exceeding ovary, or hypanthium cupped to tube shaped, clearly exceeding ovary. So here's the ovary, and then here is a very elongate tube-like hypanthium. And again, just to review, a hypanthium is formed by the fusion of the bases of the stamens, the petals, and these are the sepals, all form this giant tube together. Sepals yellow, ribes aureum, or sepals white or green, white green to pink, red, or purple. In this case, we have beautiful pink sepals. Anther tip rounded or blunt with cup-like depression or anther tip rounded, blunt, or shallowly notched without cup-like depression. So in this case, um, it's really challenging to visualize some of these alternate states sometimes. So I did toss in an extra photo here so you can see these cup-like depressions, um, it, but that is not the condition of our plant, which has these little notches at the tips of the anthers. Styles glabrous at base or styles hairy at least at base. So this is a nice, again, a bit of a dissection, tearing away the perianth. And we can see this is really glabrous all the way up. So no indication of hairs at all. Sepals erect, hypanthium more or less as long as wide or sepals spreading hypanthium longer than wide. So erect sepals would be held more or less um, in a straight line with the axis. And so these are really spreading sepals. Inflorescence pendant, sepals pink to white is Ribes sanguinium variety glutinosum or inflorescence erect to spreading sepals red, Ribes sanguinium variety sanguinium. So these are nice pendant inflorescences, might be challenging to see on an herbarium sheet, depending on how it was collected, but also really pink to white sepals. A good reason to take notes on uh, floral color on your notebook when you're collecting plants. So that brings us to the species, Ribes sanguinium. And um, again, a good time to read the description. 
check out all the photos, make sure they look familiar. And also a good chance to check out the distribution and make sure you found your plant within the expected range. So um, with that, we can take some questions. And if you have any questions on Bruce's introduction to using the eFlora, he's here too, um, in case there are specific questions about that. 